Well, for those of you who are here right now, just welcome to our next Restore Networking Web Conference. This is really just an opportunity for you all to be able to talk to each other. Um, we do have, or we're supposed to have Greg Payne, somebody from HFHI logging into the webinar um, to listen to you, to talk with you, um, get your ideas um, primarily about what kind of training would we want to have here. And um, I'm really looking to get some feedback about what you would like to have happen at uh, the Oli conference. So I think there must be somebody who is just participating by phone and I can hear typing or I can hear something in the background. If you're logged into the webinar and doing that, usually I can see who it is and, and can mute them for some sound, but it sounds like maybe somebody else is on here. If you could let me know, we can hear you. <laughs> All right. So we are going to just go around and um, have everybody just introduce themselves. I have a few questions that I was hoping you would be able to add, answer. Oops. Okay. Good. You can see the screen for those of you who are logged in there. Uh, so once we get Greg here, oh, for heaven's sakes, there's something going on with my screen here. Sorry about that. It's probably going to make you dizzy. Okay, here we are. So we are going to um, just do some introductions, some uh, peer coaching, um, which you'll see with some of the questions that we ask during the introduction. It will be um, an opportunity to share something that you'd like to get some feedback from the rest of the group about. Um, again, we're supposed to have Greg Payne here. He's not logged in just yet, but let's. I'm assuming he'll get here pretty soon. Uh, and then I want some Oli conference discussion so that I can um, deliver for you the, the best possible workshops or setup and, and networking opportunities for you with the Oli conference. I know there wasn't much there for Restore folks last year, so we're going to try to fix that this year. So if we could... All right, if you have some background noise, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mute mute some people. If I hear some background noise, it just becomes hard for other people to, um, it creates some background noise, but I'll, I'll mute you. If you could uh, go ahead and either raise your hand or unmute yourself and jump in. Um, I'll try to unmute everybody again. But I just wanted to have everybody introduce themselves, your name, your affiliate, maybe how old your Restore is, and then these two questions about tell us something that's going really well in your Restore, and then maybe one thing that you would like ideas or help with. So if you raise your hand, then I can unmute you. Jessica has her hand raised, but um, you're not connected to audio yet. so. Um, I will hold off on that for a minute. You can also use the question panel to type in some things, but I'm hoping to hear some some voices. Okay, Jessica, it's you say you're on the phone. I don't have, I can't, you could talk, you could try talking, but you're not um, connected to on my end of things. I can't do anything to help you there. <laughs> it says you're not connected. I keep sending the audio pin to you. Is there somebody else who is ready to talk? Um, it looks like Pete's connected. Denise is connected. If you unmute yourself, um, we do have Greg here now, but um, Tom and Tristan, I can unmute you if you're ready to go. And this is Pete. Do you hear me fine? We What's can up? hear you great. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Uh, sorry for my phone beeping in the background. Uh, <laughs> for the moment, but I'll jump in with your uh, uh, answers to your four questions. Uh, Pete O'Keefe, uh, Twin Cities Restore. Um, we've been in New Brighton about three years prior to that, uh, North Minneapolis about three years. Um, one thing that is really going well in your restore, um, about two weeks ago we just, um, we've always had one point of sale here um, and our foot traffic has actually tripled. Um, so it's been a little bit painful because um, uh, we were using QuickBooks but an older version of it and it was incredibly slow. Um, and we switched to a 
uh, NCR Silver, which we have on a, I, a touchscreen iPad, um, wow. and we now have two uh, cashier, two point of sales or two cashiers, um, which was in dire need of probably two three months ago, but is now working great. And the other great part about that is the speed at which we can run probably eighty percent of our transactions are credit cards, mm -hmm. um, and that is going incredibly fast instead of incredibly slow. Um, so we're pretty happy with that. And then uh, the one thing you would like ideas or help with, we're about to reset our and expand our trim department. Um, we've struggled with the fact that culturally it was simply about as simple as you could get one dollar per stick and therefore customers who are steady customers balk at the idea of anything more than that. And so I'll be changing that but uh, if we had time or later on if anybody wanted to mention how they they sell uh, various trim boards higher quality well how, how do you go about pricing it differently and marketing it? that's it great thanks Pete and we I'm jotting down the the questions so we make sure to come back to them but now as we move forward if you are introducing yourself and you have an answer or a response for somebody's question feel free to jump in and we'll just get the conversation going um, a little bit that way. So it looks like Jessica, I have you now so I can unmute you. Let's see if we can hear you. Jessica? I'm here. Hi. Hi. Uh, first, I just want to let you know that I'm the only one here in the office. So <laughs> I may have to walk away at a time at a point at some point. Great. Okay. Absolutely. So would you um, be able to just Introduce yourself and your affiliate, how old your restore is, and tell us something that's going really well and one thing you'd like ideas or help with. Okay, um, my name is Jessica Guerrero and I'm the restore manager in um, Freeborn Mauer in Minnesota. And um, we've had the restore open here for about eight years now um, with uh, Habitat for Humanity here. Um, one thing that's going really well in my store, I think um, just the the clientele, I'm getting a lot of more people coming in and in my store in particular, we did a, um, you know, a cleanup from, it was not doing the best for a long time. And so when I came in, I kind of just revamped the whole store and am trying to get things um, organized and clean and just running more efficiently. Great. Um, I guess one of my biggest things that I do struggle with is um, what ideas from the other affiliates do you have that would help to bring in more from the community, be it donations or just customers in general. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Yep. Okay. Um, Tristan, can I put you on the spot to go next? I'm going to unmute you and see if you're there. Yeah. Um, my name is Tristan Hi. Richards, and I'm with Douglas County Habitat. I'm a program development VISTA focused mainly on the restore. Um, and I am in the middle of our office right now, so if you hear a lot of noise, we have a lot of volunteers <laughs> working on our restore right now. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we'll be opening sometime this spring, so we're kind of in the remodel phase right now. So there's a lot of foot traffic in the office. Um, I think, I'm, yeah, our store isn't open yet, so my, my answers will probably be slightly different from others. But I think um, in terms of what's going well, we've had a lot of volunteers in and out working on uh, the remodel and we had done like warehouse sales before we started the actual remodel just kind of to test the market and those uh, we've done really well with and we've gotten a lot of uh, donations and haven't really started marketing or advertising to get donations yet. Um, we're going to start a big donation drive in January so that's been pretty exciting that we already have like two storage sheds full of things. Um, and then I guess something I'm really starting to work on a lot now is starting to, to develop a policy procedure manual. Um, so I've kind of been in the research phase right now, so I'm still um, looking to see what other affiliates are doing in terms of policies and things like that. So it's a pretty broad <laughs> thing, but yeah. 
Great, thank you. Um, Tom, should we, I got your question here about if anybody else's sound is going in and out. Mine is okay. Um, I'm gonna try to unmute you and let's see if maybe anything helps that way. Let's see if we can hear you, Tom. Hello? Oh, Hi, can Tom. You hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Hey, how, how are you doing? So that was what I wanted to test. You're cutting in and out, and you're right. I think it might be something going on Let with me try your my heads. Old head. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, he'll get reconnected here in just a second. Tom, we'll get you reconnected. I'm going to try. Denise, would you be able to go next? If I think you can unmute yourself and, and go ahead and share with us if you'd like. Hi, Denise. Oh, we're not hearing you yet. Denise, it looks like you unmuted yourself, but if you're talking, we can't hear you yet. If you have a headset on, I'd make sure you're not, um, the headset itself isn't muted or make sure you're connected or talking to the right, through the right spot, but we can't hear you. I'm going to try Tom. Okay, Tom, let's see if this helped. Oh, Tom, are you there? We can hear you. Something going on. You're connected. Okay. Well, Tom and Denise, maybe um, as we work on that, if you want to, you could certainly type in um, responses in the qu in the question panel, and then I can share those with everybody. Um, I'm sorry that the sound piece isn't working for you. We do have Greg here. Now also, hi Greg, welcome. Hey, how are you? This is Greg, can you hear me? We can hear you, yep, you sound great. Great, awesome. So, and then is anybody else, There's we're missing quite a few people who were registered, so I'm just wondering if anybody else is just on the phone and you're not showing up on my list, if you wanna to try to say hello. Anybody out there? Oh, I heard somebody. Okay, well, let's just move on from that. And just, does anybody have a response for Pete about the pricing of the trim? Um, something, some comments just about bringing in more um, customers and donations, um, willingness to share some policies and procedures from their own stores. Um, Denise is, uh, just did type in and said, um, so Denise is from Rochester and they're just in the process of building for their restore to open next spring. So that's who we've got here. If you try unmute you, Tom, and try again. Hey, Tom. Wow. Something that's not working there. Okay, anybody have, um, uh, if you have ideas to share for pricing of trim or bringing in more donations and customers? We did, Tristan, the, the last webinar, I thought Fred had some great ideas about bringing in donations and customers um, from the community. Anybody else want to chime in on those questions? I can uh, chime in on some donations if, if that's okay. This is great. That would be from great. From the Restore Support Group. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, just to introduce myself, I do work for Habitat International. There's a Restore Support Group um, that supports all the 800 or so restores out there. I typically work with new stores, but um, I've been dabbling with some operations, and I just went to the National Leadership Conference for AmeriCorps, and they also had some really good ideas on procuring donations. Um, so, a lot of a lot of the time, restore managers um, they get into the position they don't have a lot of time to go out in the community. But the best way really is just to get it in your car and just drive around and meet with people. Um, some creative ideas that I've heard of is going to um, a furniture store and leaving a brochure and saying, "I understand that." 
your customers possibly are going to be replacing and upgrading their furniture. So um, this is a solution for them to get rid of their furniture. Give us a contact. Give us a call. Um, other ideas could be going to a retirement center. A lot of folks are downsizing their estate, and so they might be interested in donating to your restore. Um, there's other ideas, possibly even going to a funeral director and letting them know, hey, I understand that you have families that come in, but this is a, a solution for them to downsize um, their furniture that they might have. Um, but the main main thing is to really just take the time to get in your car, go meet with people, let them, you know, build a rapport with you. Um, after, you know, establish that contact, always go back. Um, make sure that the, you know, the brochures that you've already put out there are still stock. Make sure you uh, maintain uh, relationships with them and that when they, you know, see, oh, wow, this is an idea, they know, okay, I'm going to be talking, I need to call Jessica. They know you uh, on a first-term basis. Um, get involved with um, home homeowner association. Get involved with your local chamber of commerce. They can um, be really great great um, avenues for you to figure out, you know, who in your in your area you can go after. So those are just some ideas that we've been learning about and have seen been successful. Right. Well, and, and Greg, this is uh, Pete um, up in the Twin Cities. Uh, the, the one thing I think that's true probably of, of everyone here is saying that would be great if I had the time. <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, because I, I, I agree that, that meeting face to face, there's a huge benefit to that, but it's also really a time sink. And um, it is. Yep. I, 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 the, the, I, being a realist and 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 wanting to be more of an operations in the building type person, um, mm -hmm. I, I sort of face the music, and I at the moment have one individual who's retired, who um, is pretty much just eight to twelve hours a week. Um, uh, Taking any mainly business contract or retailer leads um, and and trying to follow up on them um, and I think we all have situations where someone's dropping something off and you or, you know or we're picking it up and and you mm -hmm. learn of of a possible new situation based on that conversation but then you got to figure out how do I find the time to actually follow up on it and so I, I guess I delegate that. I, I've, I've come to rely on someone to be my shoe leather person to yep. get in the car uh, when it makes sense and, and go visit. That's great. No, that is certainly great. Um, there's a lot of resource managers that this is not their strong suit, so they delegate this, or they are, you know, they just don't have time to work on the business. They're in the business so much they don't have time to, so they delegate it. So that's perfectly fine. But um, yeah, if it's you or if it is, you know, a donation procurement person that role is being fulfilled and that's perfectly great. Great. Anybody um yeah we do have uh we do have Tom <laughs> connected now. Tom I don't know if you yeah. want to just do this do this part and then if you have any thoughts to share for Pete or for Jessica or for Tristan just about the policies, about trim pricing, about getting donations, that would be great. Okay, sounds good. My name's, uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Sound great. Uh, Tom Ranfrans, uh, I'm the manager for the Restore Marshall, Minnesota here. Um, Restore Marshall's been around for about five years. In January, we will have uh, been one year at our new location, which is moving from uh, about 5,000 square feet to uh, 11,000 square feet. Um, Things are going really good. I think some of the things that are going well is um, we've grown into our, our new location. We're finally getting back rooms organized, uh, things up on the shelves the way they should be, uh, priced. You know, we you know we struggle with the same things as as some of the others, uh, procuring new donations, having time to uh, get out to the public just to meet the local businesses and. Uh, their managers and you know having time to explain to them the benefits of helping out Habitat and a, a good place for them to get rid of some old stock rather than just tossing it or you know clogging up their back room. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the things we're looking at now is we're I don't know how many uh, restores out there most of you probably take credit cards and uh, debit cards we uh, we still only take cash or checks and uh, I've talked to my board and my executive director about it a few times, and 
I don't know, I guess there's just a few steps that I would like to get help with implementing something like that and what's the most cost effective way of doing it. I mean, is it really just three percent right off the top? And you know, I think those are things that they, they look at, but uh, there's a lot of families out there would like to come to the restore and be able to, you know, charge items too, rather than just paying cash or check. So, mm -hmm. other than that, things are going really good. One of the things that I noticed that works really well for us is uh, our uh, Facebook page, which is basically getting the message out to about 1,850 people right now. I, I could post new donations that come in, and they can be walking out the door within an hour. You know, people just yeah. run into the store to get your <laughs> get your new items and. Um, other than that, the move was a big thing for us, and uh, yeah. we we used to have a restore. I came in on about two years ago, and it was almost dangerous to even walk through the place. <laughs> and and I think that's what we, as restore managers, gotta keep away from. And a lot of the stores are moving to bigger restores now, and like we've done, and and it's just a safer. It's a it's a more retail friendly. It's just it's working really well. Right. Well, That's and kind of what I, I didn't hear a lot of some of the others. I was trying to figure out this audio. I here. know. Well, Pete was talking a little bit about one of the thing that, things that was going well was even just a, a switch in how they process point of sale or process the credit card thing. So maybe that's a good resource to connect you guys. Does anybody have thoughts or just want to share with Pete how you price trim or if you have trim boards? Anything about that question that Pete had posed? Or if you have we, trim in your store, yeah. We have a pretty big uh, trim section in our store. Uh, one of our companies outside of town in Cottonwood does cabinetry and trim work and stuff like that. So about once every two months, we get a regular donation of brand new trim. And I usually sell the smaller stuff for a buck a piece and the wider crown molding and stuff for $5 a piece. You know, a lot of it is just knowing what it's worth retail and just marking it way down. You know? Yeah. Anybody else have some advice for Pete? Or Pete, do you have any follow-up questions about that? No, but I'll, I'll mention um, mainly for Tom's benefit on credit cards that um, if you had missed that, I, had, I think I had even mentioned that yeah. probably about probably about 80, well, actually within my new system, it, it shows that the, we don't take checks and, and the split between um, cash and credit cards is a little surprising in that it's about 80% credit card. Um, so I think we've simply moving to a society where people do put five dollar items on their credit card, and um, the system that we just implemented about two weeks ago, um, I was looking for something that was both touch screen, so it's easy to just tap buttons for saying, you know, if, if the product, if there's five different product items, it, it takes 20 seconds to, to tap all that in. And then um, uh, what we implemented that really speeds things up is if it's a credit card transaction under $25, it just automatically prints out. They don't need to sign. And then if it's greater than $25, um, I guess you'd have to visualize it, but it, it, it's an iPad screen that's mounted on a stand, and the stand rotates. So you sort of flip it, and then uh, the the... Um, person making the purchase um, sees the same screen that probably all of us are used to at the grocery store uh, where you sign on the dotted line. Um, and I don't know, that's just, it's worked out pretty slick. Um, um, and, and I would encourage you to figure out a way to take credit cards because I just think that's what, you know, all shoppers at all various industries you know, they, they go get a cup of coffee and they and they use a credit card for two dollars and fifty cents. So, um, you know, that's that's the society we live in. I had a moment recently where I was apologizing for that, and I think that it was the cashier was so young that it, it didn't even occur to them that 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 I should apologize for charging a small amount. You know, where it was that was almost a dated idea. I'm thinking of that. So. Yeah, Tom, I wonder about the just the return on investment. Would you sell more, you know, despite the fees for doing it? Would you ultimately sell more if the you were able? Are, the fees are one part of it. Am I yeah. still on? Yeah, you're still on. But, yep. Okay. The other part you're looking at, though, is she's talking the iPad and probably a new yeah. cash register. There's going to be upfront costs of at least, uh, I don't know, I'd say maybe $1,000. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
there's got to be a uh, less inexpensive way to, you know, to get it done, I think. But I go through that every day. I, I you know, I'm I'm ringing up customers every day, and and it's usually sending them to the gas station down the street. And I've I've told them I said it's either time to get a cash machine in here or set this up so we can take take debit and credit cards. But. Well, and and I'll actually follow up because and it's interesting that um, hardware is an expense because I did a, you know I and more so my IT person you know did the research and dedicated point of sale systems that include a, a very specific hardware unit. Yes, that's pretty expensive, but there are several. Uh, um, options. The one we chose, which was National Cash Register, uh, and Square is a very well-known one that are mainly based on an iPad or other device. But but when you think of the fact that you can probably find someone in the community willing to donate their old iPad that's two years old because they're upgrading, um, then you've you've really removed the hardware portion and. That particular model for point of sale is usually cloud-based or internet-based, um, and so you just need an internet connection. You need a device or two or three, and you could even be using beyond assembly system. You can just be using a cell phone, in theory, um, and you need a little module for the card swipe. So it's actually very inexpensive. But the flip side of that then becomes there's sort of a per transaction fee. So you know you have to decide if that's beneficial to say it's it's a fraction of every purchase that's going towards the overall cost um, that then allows you to I, I can say that when I'm offsite I can go online and see how sales are doing in the middle of the day and you know are we have we made eight hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars at this point in the day um, how many transactions uh, you know who's run it up so there's there's a lot of metrics that you can um, Either choose that are or are not important in an upgrade of a point of sale system. Or wouldn't somebody donate that? I mean, if you put that out there, a thousand bucks up front, if you were able to articulate how much of a return on investment you would get for that, you know. I, I think so, and I, I yeah. mean, I guess you have to make the call out and see. Well, right, yeah. Because that, um, you know, that type of actually, after we had ours installed, um, one of our volunteers worked at Microsoft and was was giving me a hard time about putting in an Apple product and, and he said you know I probably could have gotten it's the surface if I'm not mistaken you know their device uh, donated so you just have to find the right person who um, can help you with with uh, uh, my point being that that the iPad is simply an a, a means of which to do the transaction it's not mm -hmm. the software itself Greg, maybe we at the national level we can. <laughs> it seems like couldn't these credit card companies just waive the fees for restores? Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, Wouldn't that be great? You know, <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, those fees is kind of where you need to look at the small print whenever you're um, thinking about deciding which uh, credit card company to go with. But um, yeah, just like um, that was last mentioned, um, the plastic is the way of the society now and kind of just the cost of doing business and it's it's kind of a convenience that customers, American consumers expect now to be able to use their credit card and um, a lot of people don't have cash on them even or I don't think I even carry cash or, or checks and so if I were to go into a store and not be able to use a credit card, um, this is nothing against your store at this current but I probably wouldn't be able to pay for an item so unfortunately I wouldn't be able to buy it, I'd have to probably come back and that kind of thing so it's just a convenience for the American consumers just because that's what they're expecting. So I completely agree with um, trying to push for um, getting a credit card processing system in your store. Uh, Jessica, do you guys take credit cards? She might be actually taking a sale right now. I'm sure she's not right here. but um, We actually don't yeah. take credit cards. We either take cash or um, checks. And actually, I haven't had a really big problem on that. Um, you know, when the customer asks, you know, if they t if we take the credit or debit, um, I just simply tell them that we take cash or credit, and they use or cash or check, and they really don't have a problem. Um, we are a, a smaller um, mm -hmm. communities, but they usually just go and 
or they'll ask us, um, okay, can we put this on hold and we'll be right back with the money if they're, you know, intend to come right back or, you know, I, I guess that hasn't been a huge issue um, okay. for for us. So, Right. And then I did chat to Denise and Tristan too to just, you know, it's something to keep in mind as you're getting ready to open about wondering if that's part of the plan or part of the budget for getting the new store opened. But um, Tristan, I can un unmute you if you want to chime in at all of it. Oh, sure. I was just typing you a message, actually. Oh, okay. um, I just, I wasn't actually sure. So I just flipped open our business plan and it looks like we are planning on um, taking credit cards. Um, I don't know exactly what the plan is for that yet, <laughs> but it's in the budget. So, okay. Great. Yeah, we just haven't discussed that for quite a while now. Good. Help this screen just keeps goofing up on me. Sorry about that. Um, so Greg, we've got you here. Um, one of the things that we talked about in our last, we were doing these quarterly networking sessions. So this is just our second one. And we're actually, I mean, we're missing about, there were six more people who were registered to participate. So it makes me a little worried about technology and whatnot, but, um, mm -hmm. but we'll just plow forward with who we have. And I, I suspect maybe somebody's just on the phone and we can't hear them. Um, so oh, I do have, uh, Carolyn said she registered and yeah. she did show up. So she's here with me. Oh, good. She's, she's from Albert Lee. She's from Freeborn County. Oh, great. Super. So she's, yep. So she's here and she did register. Perfect. Well, that, that explains one of them. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Carolyn. Um, all right, so, but we do have Greg here. So one of the things that we had talked about was um, that we, you know, wanting to provide more training. We had Fred Snyder from our South Central store who um, he had been um, uh, presented as one of our best practices ambassadors. So really talked about his store and, and some tips and things from him. Um, and one of the things that he raved about is the Restore University. Um, so just what we're looking at right now are just it's a few things that I pulled from just the uh, resource support group, the email that goes out to everybody. So one, if you're not getting that, you should. And then um, <laughs> we can make sure to get you connected with that if you're not receiving those emails from HFHI. But I don't know, Greg, if you just want to talk about the resource support group and just, I, I thought these were mostly the training related things or some resources that are available for those who might be new to resource, but there might be some other things that are, so, cause we've got a good mix here of really experienced restore managers who are looking for probably to go a little bit deeper and then, um, you know, some of these other things that are beginners might, you know, be find really helpful or those who are thinking about opening stores. Um, but if there's any news or updates or things that, that you want to find out from this group, or we can talk about what would work best for you guys or what kind of training you would like to receive, because then we're going to talk about our conference. And so it's kind of this mix of what should we offer at our conference for our restore folks and um, what else could we offer outside of that venue as well? Kind of what are the things that are available, but just to give them a chance to um, hear what's going on with the restore support group, you know, are these topics that we're bringing up in line with what you're hearing from other places, that sort of thing. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so like April mentioned, we do have Restore University 201. For those of you who have um, not really heard of that session, it's an in-person session, five days. Uh, we have it in Charlotte, North Carolina, where our office is for three times, a, three times a year. And then the fourth quarter, we also have one offering in Denver. So um, it's kind of an offering for the West Coast folks. And it's one of my favorite times of year. It's a really great week that a lot of managers can just come together and not only learn um, some of the, the classes that we have that we teach, but also to build camaraderie with each other, make friends, you know, make those relationships where you can bounce ideas off someone that you met during Rooster University. So it's really, really been a special week for a lot of the folks. I think we got a lot of great feedback from it. Um, from our past annual report, we saw that Restores that um, had a representative of 10 are doing better um, by a pretty significant percentage in gross sales and profits. So that's really great to hear. Um, a lot of the classes are pretty um, 
pretty intense, and they cover anything from search engine optimization, having a great website, to how do you procure donations, to what your facility should look like, um, how do you retain volunteers, how do you recruit volunteers. Um, customer service happens to, be, happens to be one of my favorite classes. Um, our, our, as the research board group, our team is really trying to emphasize customer service. Um, it's not really um, high priority for thrift stores in general in the, in the U.S., but if we can differentiate ourselves as you know, um, a company that provides great customer service, we feel that's going to go a long way to retaining those um, donor relationships and to also retaining those shoppers that come to our store and our volunteers. Um, so in, in, in doing those sessions, we also are periodically developing online courses, um, like April has mentioned. Those are great ways for you to um, in, incorporate into your volunteer program, orientation, letting your volunteers understand a little bit about uh, the basics of Restore Nation, um, also training your current staff members and volunteers on customer service. That's a new one that, that's been um, just released. And we also, um, as a group, we have some of our representatives attend certain SSO trainings. So if there's an interest um, in any state support organization for us to come, we can typically ask them which classes would most benefit the, the restore managers in their area and then have one of our representatives teach at that class. Um, those, again, include a lot of the Restore 201 classes. Um, another one is called Whatever ED Needs to Know About the Restore. Um, to really educate these EDs on how to really manage the restore entity. Um, and then we also are now developing a restore 301. Sounds like a lot of you folks um, have been in the restore role for a long time, and so you might want to have that next level training. And so we're currently developing restore 301, which will be a little bit more advanced, expanding on what people learned in 201. Um, so those are the, the kind of the training opportunities we currently are developing and currently have. And we would love to hear any type of topic that would be most beneficial for you guys. Um, just any feedback is, is great. I we currently have uh, a new member on our team who is the training um, manager for our Restore team. And I'm going to pass along anything I hear from you guys to her so she can kind of get a feel for what, what in the field is you know, of interest to Restore managers. And let me know if you guys have any questions about what I just spoke about as well. So we have the opportunity as 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 your SSO to um, we could host and invite the restore folks to come do mm -hmm. a training here, either in conjunction with our conference or separately. You know, whatever or both <laughs> would work also. Mm -hmm. So um, anxious to hear from all of you what you might be interested in what would get you to attend what would get you to come here or elsewhere somewhere in the state to um, be there for that training maybe i should just say so the 2014 oli conference is coming up it's it's in march march 12th through the 14th uh in wilmer minnesota this year um so we do have um, space reserved for some pre-conference sessions on Wednesday, March 12th. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different options for what we could offer for our Restore folks about, um, we could do something in, on the pre-conference on Wednesday. My sense is that we might just, you guys might prefer to just do a track on Thursday, which is kind of the full day of the conference. Um, there's some Friday, there's a half day on Friday, so there's a couple workshops and then a closing plenary. Um, there could be room, there's room in there for evening activities too, about visiting the new store in Wilmer. They would be just opening in a new location. And um, we're talking about kind of stealing the HFHI idea of doing some dine arounds. So if you go to Atlanta to the HFHI conference, then um, your evening meals are on your own and that's what we're doing this year for the only conference as well, but we could um, get our restore folks together to eat together so that you have some built in networking time. Um, I'm open to ideas for exhibitors or, you know, requests for things like that. I mean, I think listening to you talk about some of the credit card processing or ways to take those payments, maybe there would be um, 
some possibilities there for exhibitors and folks who could be on hand to answer questions and let you try out some of their products or things like that as well. But um, I guess this thing <laughs> will not stop doing that. Uh, if you have um, thoughts for myself or for Greg about what you'd like to see happen, I would love to hear from you. So we've got, um, for those of you who are on the call right now, if you have ideas of, of workshops, presenters, schedule, things that you would like to see happen. So that's going to be held in um, March 12th through the 18th in Wilmer, Minnesota this year? 12th through the 14th. The it's two and a half. Uh, the pre-conference is optional too, so that doesn't necessarily have to include um, resource folks if you want to keep your, you know, like it might be that you need to be at your store on Wednesday and you want to just come for Thursday, Friday, or I, that's what I'm open to hearing from all of you. We have an email that's been sent to us as far as like the times and the events and everything. Um, we have sent the, our newsletter has announced the dates and the location. We don't necessarily have the times for everything all squared away just yet. It's going to depend on, so I want to get some of your feedback. We're currently getting um, RFPs, requests, uh, um, proposals for workshops from presenters. And so then we will open registration and, and release the whole detailed schedule in January. So it's early enough that you can really shape what this looks like for the restore track. Yeah. I just want it to be exactly what you guys, what would be most useful to all of you and, and set it up in a way that you'll actually come. Because I think the reason that the restore track has gone away in previous years, granted, I've only been here a year, <laughs> but was that the what what I hear is just that we would off that they would offer a research track, but they couldn't get people to come, you know, and, and not because people didn't want to. I think some of that comes down to kind of like Jessica was saying, she's on the webinar right now, but she's also the only person working in her store. <laughs> so if a customer comes in, she's got to go there. Would it uh, material covered on there kind of be similar to like the Restore University 101? Because I mean, the last time we were on here, a lot of people haven't even uh, done that part of the like training. Yeah, it could. I think I would want to make sure that we offered something more advanced. Also, would mm -hmm. that you know kind of I don't know, Tom? Well, would you would you be have you done 101 or would you be interested in that? I've done the 101. Basically, yeah. it's all online. And you can print it off and you, you take your time and work through the different steps. And a lot of that are the things that you are going to be doing on a daily basis as a restore manager. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was informative and it helped people. It helped you to kind of outline the different tasks that need to be done. Mm -hmm. Let me maybe to trigger some thoughts here, too. These are... I went through all of the other SSO conferences that are happening this fall and sort of looked at some of the titles of the workshops that they were offering for their restore folks. So things about customer service, um, maximizing sales. This one is more like, when should I open a restore? And then more like rules and regulations, which is probably some of the stuff that Tristan's looking into. Um, expansion planning, um, Tom, you could have used that a year ago, maybe, or Pete a few years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, this one comes up often, the legal issues or human resources. Um, this is inventory management and presentation. Most of you, not everybody, but a lot of you attended a resource safety session that we offered in May. Um, you know, marketing your restore, that's come up too, just about how do I get donations? How do I get customers? Um, and then Greg mentioned some of these, but the, there's a catalog of workshops that we can look through from HFHI. And so here's some of those titles and we can tell you more about what's included in those. But one of my thoughts too was it could also be that, you know, we can have a resource track, but there's no reason that a resource manager couldn't attend other other sessions at the conference too, where there might be a marketing workshop that would be relevant for volunteer managers and for restored managers, or 
um, learning about the HFHI strategic plan, or, you know, there could be other things that you might be interested in attending that aren't exclusively about Restore, but that's just what I want to hear from all of you about what you would be most interested in. Tom, are you, are you kind of saying like, if it was only 101, that wouldn't necessarily get you there? No, I want to, it's in Wilmer. I mean, it's in our backyard. So <laughs> I'll, def, I'll definitely be there. And even if it was 101, it's good refreshers and good reminders okay. of what we should be doing. There's, there's three key things that where we're at in our restore, in our affiliate, what we need to work on. One of them is implementing some type of, you know, point of sale and taking credit cards. We're at a point now where our store's set up where we should be able to keep a better track of what's going out, you know, what categories of products are doing better for us, and being able to take credit cards and transactions. That's what we need to do. We're a size of affiliate now where we should have a website. We don't have a website. People just go directly to our Facebook page. That's another aspect where we should have that now. Um, you know, every restore is going to be at a different stage. Some people are going to be uh, opening up a new restore, and they're going to need to know how to lay out that store and come across proper shelving and the way to, and you know, safe ways to display items and things like that. So, all of it is going to be a good refresher, anyways. But then, if we can, you know, come together and hit a couple of those topic topics that are specific to each affiliate, it'll just help everybody. Mm -hmm. Pete or Jessica, Denise, anybody have some, some thoughts or Tristan? Um, I don't have any. Okay. Not really. What would you most like to attend, Jessica and Carolyn? Have either of you done the 101 training? This is Carolyn, and I haven't done the 101 training, uh, but I hope to do it before then. And uh, I'm new at this. I've been running the Albert Lee Restore for about a year and a half. And uh, um, our sales are up and our donations are up. Right now, this month, I'm doing a partnership with the Salvation Army in Albert Lee because, because uh, a lot of businesses in Albert Lee, they take food collections for the Salvation Army food shelf in, our, in Albert Lee. And uh, with and they're low on food right now because of Thanksgiving, and and the other businesses they they will say uh, bring in a can of food and we'll give you a five dollar off coupon or we'll give you um, you know ten percent off or something. And so I decided to try that. So for the month of November, uh, I put an ad in the shopper and I put an ad on the radio. The radio costs two dollars for the month and the shopper costs forty four dollars a week for the ad for a business card size ad. And, and it says, uh, bring any donation of food, clothing, or household item to the restore in the month of November, and I'll give you a $5 off coupon good for my restore. And they can use it, they can accumulate coupons, they can, um, you know, each person that comes in can get a $5 off coupon good for the month of November. And uh, because it's pretty full of stuff right now, and, and I want, the idea is to get people in the store to look at things and bring a donation in. And uh, and and then maybe buy some. Mm -hmm. And and uh, people are bringing in food, clothing, and household items, which I will take to the Salvation Army. And um, uh, so um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Great. So I would I would I would appreciate. I did run a nonprofit for five years from 1996 to 2001. So I did go to some seminars back then on how to run a nonprofit and do fundraising and all this, but that was a different kind of a nonprofit mm -hmm. and, and uh, a different service. It was a, more of a service than selling something. And so, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to go to the seminar or the conference in Wilmer and uh, attend whatever you have there. Great. Very good. How do you guys feel about, can anybody, just anybody just want to weigh in on whether or not you think a pre-conference session would be good for restores or should we limit it, stick to just Thursday and Friday? This is Peter. I would tend to think Thursday and Friday would be my personal thought. Okay. I just don't know what if we would have, doing at a oh, go ahead, honey. Go, sorry. I say honey. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, what would you be doing at a pre-conference? You know, it could be um, just some time for all of you to be together. That might be where we would do something with Greg or the resource support group and do a training that day. So then you could be freed up to attend other things on Thursday and Friday. Um, I can do, I'll just do, I can do a little poll of everybody about that. And, but I'm pretty sure my guess is, my hunch was that Thursday and Friday would be fine. And I just wanted to at least just check my assumption there to see if, if that was right on. Um, Tristan did share um, that this will be her first Oli conference. So just about everything will be new to her. Um, but she thinks it would be interesting to have some sort of a session on connecting the ReStore to Habitat's broader mission beyond just marketing, et cetera, um, ideas or how to communicate the resource impact on the community partner families, um, including some programming advice in terms of advocacy, engaging younger volunteers, do-it-yourself programs, um, some things like that. So some bigger, broader things, which sometimes going to a conference, you get some really hands-on skilled tools and ideas, but you also get inspired and energized to keep doing the work that you're doing. So I think a good balance of those things might be might be nice. Greg, do you have any thoughts about like what's worked well at other conferences or what's been really popular um, or what the resort folks in other states have been really pleased to have had offered? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm thinking in the pre-conference would be awesome if we could, you know, go on a tour and just visually go through stores and talk about, you know, great things that they're doing, look at their, you know, their operations, their policies, those kind of things. So um, just the signage that they have, what what messages are they sending their customers? So that'd be a neat thing to do. That Restore Tour, which we do for Restore Tour 1, is probably one of the most popular um, activities that we do. Um, I think you had a slide on um, uh, Restore Reality, which is kind of a fun, interactive way for us to really get to thinking about, okay, how do we keep our store clean? How do we really um, make sure that we're marking, we have a markdown strategy in place to where that the, the merchandise that's on our square footage is selling, and if it's not selling, it's getting reduced in price or if it's, it's taken off the floor. So those are two of the kind of more fun um, fun activities that we do at Research University, which we could potentially do if that Wednesday was open. Um, if it's going to be the Thursday, Friday, the, the customer service class we teach has been very, very popular. Um, another one is Restore Metrics, a great one that I, I probably my favorite because it's a little more data heavy, but we're able to look at, um, you know, the metrics of your store and look at donor households in your market and determine projections that you might be able to make and based on those projections, how much, how many uh, full-time equivalents you should have, what, what you should be spending, spending on marketing. Um, that's a really another great class just to kind of get your head wrapped around, okay, this is, you know, this is what our market can bear. This is how we get to um, this goal of $500,000 as opposed to where we're at it. 300 or something like that. So those are probably the top two um, classes we teach at Restore 201. Um, and typically we take classes from 201 and, and teach those at SSOs. But again, there's another one out there that is, you know, is of some value to you guys. You might be able to develop that one. Great. I think, I mean, because we, we also could do um, – Something like you attend the keynote and the kickoff in the morning and then, oh, for heaven's sakes, this keeps happening. Uh, the afternoon on Wednesday, or sorry, on Thursday, the afternoon session could be, we've done this with our construction managers before, where they take, you know, a couple sessions and it's more field trip time. <laughs> like they'll go do, go do an existing home assessment or go do a tour of homes in that um, service area and to look at some of those things. So I was just asking Tom uh, how close Marshall is to Wilmer. There would be the store in Wilmer, but I wonder if we could hit more than one store. Um, if we did that in the afternoon and then had the restore folks come together for a meal and, and then you'd still have Friday morning to do a couple more workshops and like I'm getting some feedback here on the chat about that people think the metric sounds in sounds interesting customer service is probably a good idea um, and so we can talk more about that but then you could still come back and be a part of the bigger conference but we could certainly steal you away on Thursday afternoon 
and not have to do a third day away from your stores. But may that sound interesting? Tom, did you, <laughs> how close is Wilmer to Marshall? I think we're maybe an hour away. That's, yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> well, okay. I'll double check the how far it is. Maybe forty-five minutes. We can can we do some do some training on the bus? <laughs> like we take everybody there. Um, Pete or any uh, anybody else have some thoughts about what you'd like to see happen at the conference, or give it some thought and let me know. We still yeah, have. I will ask Greg, I'll ask Greg a quick question. Um, Great. I am going to go to Charlotte, so that will be my first experience, really, of, of interacting, and that's why I might not be typing in too much on the, sure. the local conference in terms of what the needs are. But, uh, Greg, if you don't mind, maybe just for my benefit, it might be for the others, too, but um, the, the entire support group, I, I know I've seen on Habitat International, there's one page, I think, in a PowerPoint that is might be a year or two old, but it's a bio of the various people tied in for restore support. But give us a sense of what that headcount currently is and what people specialize in. I, I would think all of us have an occasional desire to ask the S expert and what is the best way to go about doing that. Perfect. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to start with my team first real quick. So um, there's Myself and then a consultant from New Stores, Tim Murphy, and then we have an AmeriCorps Vista named Caroline, and um, and then another, the fourth member of our New Store team is Melissa. So I'm a, I'm the accounts manager for affiliates going through the New Store process. So I help um, guide folks along the way, help them. Um, and I answer any questions they may have. I'm kind of their go-to person through that entire process, um, scheduling calls, looking at store layouts, looking at their potential facilities they're looking to lease or buy. So that's kind of me. And then Tim takes the higher level um, questions and calls and things like that and does the trainings. And then we have a demographer on staff. Um, one of the popular services we offer is a penetration study or a market analysis, and that really allows folks to learn about their market. Um, penetration study goes into the number of donor households they they have and the uh, um, projections we think that their market could bear. And then um, the market analysis goes into more depth on um, data on how many stores can be in the market, where in your market they should be located, what order, um, which location should be open first, should you relocate your store, those kind of questions that, that's in the market analysis tied with um, also data on traffic counts, crime index, things like that. Um, and then Carolina Revista is doing a lot of research for us to see you know, what, what the affiliates are doing and um, how, how our, our materials currently and what, you know, what missing pieces are there um, what is a, we're really trying to understand um, multi-store markets. What does that look like? So she's going to be doing a lot of research for us. So that's the new store team. And then we have um, our director is Frank Reed. He does a lot of traveling around and visiting with folks. One of his main things right now is, a start, uh, is starting associations. So we have um, restore associations currently in Florida. There's one in Michigan and another in Mid-Atlantic. And these are associations where restores can opt in to receive a dedicated regional consultant. That means that they're, that's their go-to person. That consultant will be visiting their store often, evaluating the store, helping them with their um, action, uh, their strategic plan and some action items that they can be doing currently and how to get to that plan. Um, we provide them with some marketing materials, website templates, that kind of thing. And so those affiliates are opting in to be a part of a collaborative regional group of restores. Um, so there's three uh, regional consultants on our team as well. Um, and then you can kind of see Tina Keen there. She <laughs> is a capacity building specialist. She does a lot of work. She's kind of our um, um, center of knowledge, and she currently is working on an annual report as well as a lot of different projects we throw at her. Um, one of the best ways to get 
your question to the right person is to email restore at habitat.org and it goes to Tina and she's able to send it to one of the specialists on the team. So if it's a new store question, it'll come to me or if it's about a um, consulting engagement, it'll go to Mark who's also on our team who's our, kind of a free agent right now that's able to travel to train at SSOs or to um, do engagements, consulting engagement to engagement with a restore. Um, and then we also just hired a new training director I mentioned her, and so that's going to be great because our training program, I feel, is, is good, but she's able to take it up to another level and really provide us with a whole new program of Restore 301, and, and that's something we really desperately need. So we're happy to have her as a new member of our team. And let me try to think. We're growing pretty quickly here. There's a good many of us. You're not on Ooh, this. Not uh... <laughs> I am PDF not. Yeah, here. that's actually a little old. Yeah, so it's the their origin started with these folks that you see here. I actually was a VISTA last year, and my my VISTA project was to implement the new store process. Now that that's um, now that that's been implemented, I'm able to now switch into an account manager role. We did have Lindsey Kirkwood in the top right that oh, really yep. was the facilitator for Restore University. That is, she's gone on to Harrisburg to work in the Restore there, and so we have another member, um, Cole Fiery, who's a Vista that is the facilitator for Restore University. So if you have any questions about the next coming Restore University or a future one, Cole Fiery is going to be your your main point of contact. Great. Well, we are um, we are past our twelve fifteen cutoff time. So, just for those of you who need to get into your stores, that's fine. Um, I can stay on and answer questions, or if people have more things to talk about, that I just posted in the chat. That um, I think what I'll do is based on this feedback, and then because we're missing so many of the people who had registered today, um, I'll just put together a few scenarios for early conference schedules and content, and then I can put it out to everybody for a vote. Um, you know, just to get some more feedback on what we think would work. Tom has graciously volunteered that he says he'd be happy to give a tour and answer questions at his store in Marshall. I mean, it would be kind of neat if we could get to both stores, but I'm going to, I'll put together a couple scenarios of how that could work. And then, um, and I think Greg, that those thoughts about some of the popular sessions or things that have been, that are really good, um, we can plug that in for some of the content and think about other things. And then um, hopefully we'll get lots and lots of you here and together to be able to network. And then, um, and then a lot with the conference and when you're together, then that'll help us to be forming more of an identity, I think, as a, as a group and as this, um, just as a, as a team working together here in the state, but then we can, uh, move forward with the networking calls or thinking about other training based upon how things go at Oli. Does that sound okay to everybody? Absolutely. Okay, great. And then just any ideas or things that occur to you while you're driving home today or <laughs> tooling around your store, just pass them along to me. And um, I, I truly do do my best to just deliver what it is that, that you guys want to see. So um, that would be great. Any other questions or comments? Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I'll sleuth out and try to find out what happened to the rest of our folks or if there's somebody who's, if there are people who are on the phone and we can't hear you and we can't see that you're here, thank you for listening in. And we will um, just, again, shoot me an email and let me know that you were here. But um, thank you so much, Greg, for being with us. It's really helpful. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Sure. All uh, right. All right. Thanks, Thank's everybody. Beautiful. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Do you want to ask any questions? I'll stay here if anybody has any questions. But... No, but just, I'll, this is Pete. Thanks a lot, April, for the time and effort. To you much you bet. I'll put it, when I do the follow-up, I'll put the put your trim question out to you, or if you want to <laughs> I can see if anybody else has a response. I thought it's weird that there's so many people missing. So I'm worried that they had trouble logging in or something. But all right. Thanks. Thank you.